large scientific discoveries come from unexpected places. So I think it's very difficult to plan in advance how you're going to make a major quantum leap in whichever area you're trying to plan. So I think the key is to bring uh, outstanding, rigorous, creative, highly innovative thinkers together um, and to get them to focus on, on a problem that they haven't necessarily thought about before. Uh, in general, fields tend to get somewhat stale. Um, the people who've been working in fields for a long time see the world in a particular way. Often those are important ways, but they may not necessarily be the ways that are going to break you out of the, of the kind of relatively mainstream uh, way of viewing a disease. And I think this is particularly true of complicated human diseases, and scleroderma is a great example of that. And that the key is really to bring iconoclasts in who see the disease in a way that is fresh is influenced by the, their own worldviews and not necessarily by the dogma of the field which has, which has kind of grown and is relatively constraining over time. I think it's not, it's not a failing of the scleroderma community, it's, it's just the way that I think that science uh, tends to work, that people get comfortable thinking about the problem in a way that, that, that their knowledge evolved and sometimes seeing other people asking why or hmm, I don't agree that those are incredibly effective. I think the Scleroderma Research Foundation has been particularly effective at being an iconoclast. It's all about the uh, creative individuals that get brought in. A group of highly creative individuals can make highly creative advances. I think it focuses, and the Scleroderma Research Foundation is always focused on human disease, primarily on human disease. That's, that's the focus, that's what people want to influence. Um, and it's clear to all people investigating who are part of the Scleroderma Research Foundation that that is the goal.